Well, hello to all you wannabe entertainers, future award-winning actors, TV presenters, producers, whatever you want to get out in life, it's, it's, the decision is up to you. My name is Rosie Mutene. Um, a lot of you are probably very young, don't remember me from generations, but um, I uh, decided I wanted to, to, to send you a special message. I would have loved to be there in person, but um, one of the major things of surviving in this industry is um, correct time management. And so, unfortunately, I couldn't do it because of other obligations. But, um, yeah, so, as I said, my name is Rosie Mudene. I graduated from Wits University with a BA in Dramatic Art. And um, I entered the industry first as a TV presenter. Um, on a show called In Style, which was like a top billing, but, but on a smaller scale. And uh, then I was fortunately cast in, as, as, one, as one of the principal actors in Generations. And I just want to tell you a little story about how I actually got into that. And, and it's a lesson that I've learned, and it's a lesson that I'd like to pass on to all of you, is that you always have to be prepared. Opportunities are always going to come your way. And if you're not prepared to grab those opportunities, you're going to miss out on a lot. Also, never be too scared to, 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 to learn again or to, to ask questions about the industry. Um, when I was at university, I mean, our focus was theatre. So when I did my first audition for Four Generations, it was for a character called Kensani. And um, coming with my theatre background, of course, my acting was way over the top. It was really, really big for television. <coughs> Excuse me, and <clears throat> the producer at the time said to me, Look, you're a theatre actor, you're not going to make it in TV. Um, unfortunately, you don't get the role. Now, I could have taken what he, had, what, what he had said to heart, or I could have made a decision, or made, 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 made a different decision. And that's exactly what I did. So I said, Thank you very much. I went to my agent at the time and I said, Next, next audition. I don't care even if it's somebody sweeping the background, just let me get onto that set. And in the preparation for that, I went home, I went back to the drawing board. I went back to my, my acting books. I watched copious amounts of episodes of Generations, international programs, American, UK, just to see what I, what I, need, what I needed to take and what I needed to do to become a really good TV actress. I love many, many soaps and many, many series. You're working with multi-camera setups. So... I would watch people, how, how they interacted with cameras, how they, 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 they used the emotions and so forth. Because I knew that that day would come where my agent would call me and say, listen, there is a role. And that day did come. And she contacted me and she said, look, there's a role for a reporter. It's a once-off. You probably will get about two calls. Um, but you said, if you want to get in the door, get in the door. And that's exactly what I did. And I remember rehearsing my line. It was one line. It was like one or two silly words. And I remember working on it, working on it, working on it. And finally the day came and I was called to set and they ended up carrying my words. So I didn't even do, I, I did the scene, but I was in the background. And instead of seeing that as a wasted opportunity, I decided to watch other actresses and watching people like Pamela Nonvete, um, Fana Mokwena, um, you know, all, all, all the, the people that we were looking up to at the time to see how they, how they worked on and then before I knew it, I was called back and back, and then I was given a couple of lines, lines that weren't canned, so I was finally put on screen speaking. And I kept on working on that, working on it, and asking questions and seeing, seeing what I needed to do to become a fantastic actress. Until before I knew it, six weeks down the line, I get a call from my agent saying, well, they want to write my character in as one of the lead characters. But not only that, is that my, my family is going to be one of the rival families going up against the Moroccos, which at the time was incredi incredibly influential. So I was able to use that opportunity. And, and originally, I, I, I set into the industry and it was supposed to be two years to learn the multicam setup, to build up on my brand and so forth. And before I knew it, five years down the line, and, and I was, okay, you know, very, very comfortable being where I was. And this brings me to my next point was the one day I'd, I'd given my first motivational speak at a prison and I remember driving back, rushing to, this, to the studio because I had to go perform scenes for generations. And for the first time in my life, I realized I'm going to work and I didn't like that feeling. And the reason why I'm telling you this is that 
some people's journeys in a job, journeys in a relationship, um, in anything that you do in your, in your lifestyle choices, you all have your own type of journeys and you all have your own length. And at that point, I realized my time and generations had come up. Because the older Dash says that if you know, um, love what you do and you'll never work another day in your life. And that was the first day that I felt that, okay, I'm going to work. And I needed to make a change in order to grow. So I contacted my agent again. This time it was a different agent. I'd moved on. And I said to her, I said, you know, whatever's out there, send me for auditions. I'm ready to get back into the playing field. And, you know, for somebody who's had a stable job for five years, um, at the time Generations was sitting on about four and a half million viewership per day. So our profiles are very high. We, we, we were the creme de la creme in terms of, of television because it's also what Mfundi Vundler, the producer and creator, did was that for the first time we put black people into a really beautiful and positive light. Um, basically what the Cosby Show did for, 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 for USA in, in the 1970s and early 80s. So anyway, so my agent then said to me, look, there's this new, new film that's going to be cast. Uh, it's called Hotel Rwanda. And it's the same director um, who, who's done a lot of uh, multi-award winning films, one being um, The Name of the Father. And she says, come in for this audition. I'm waiting for the audition. The director said, look, you're really, really great, but I can see you've been doing a lot of TV. Um, you're not that captivating for the film, for, for, for film and for, for, for the screen. I said, cool, not a problem. Did exactly what I did when, when I went to Generations. This time, I focused on different films, international films, local films. Went back to my, my reading books. Um, internet was coming up. Went onto the internet and researched and did as much work as possible. My agent said, look, we've got a role in the background. It's probably going to be like one or two, two calls, but at least you're going to be on set. And I said, fantastic, let me go in. Those two calls were then extended to another 14 calls. calls. Um, and I got the opportunity to, to work with people like Nick Nolte, um, you know, some of the great international actors. And the reason why I've told you about these two particular stories in my life is that sometimes that door isn't just going to open. So if you want to get in somewhere, find a window, find a chimney, um, wait at the door again for it to open again. And in the process of while you're waiting for that, work on your craft. You know, I'm, today I've, I've, I've like reached almost over 25 years within the industry, but, and I'm still learning. I still do my voiceover exercises. I still read up on different other acting techniques and refresh my mind on the acting techniques that I learned when I was at university. So that's the most important thing is that know your craft. And learn to, to, depending on where you want to go into the industry. So you, there's TV presenting, there's acting, there's theatre acting, film acting and television acting, which are all very, very different. My advice to you is that where you want to go into, hone in on that craft before you then move into another area of the industry. I honed in on my TV presenting. I then went into my acting. I went back to my TV presenting for a while. And f realized that there were very few female directors and producers in the industry. I then asked my boss at the time when I was working for Emily Africa if she could train me as a producer, and she was hesitant. And I was like, okay, no problem. I didn't let that stop me. I then worked with different directors that I worked with on, on set, and when we were traveling through, through, through Africa, I kept on asking questions. Why are you holding a shot like that? Why do you do that? And constantly, constantly asking questions because I knew that the opportunity would arise where I could step onto the plate as a producer, and that did happen. And before I knew it, four years down the line, I was directing inserts for a program called Studio 53. And moving into to, to, to the other part of the industry is that not only do you need to know home craft, not only do you need to know and become the best at, at that specific, but you also need to know what your rights are as individuals. And the best way to do that is to get your own agent. And there are a lot of flyby agents out there. Um, I would be very, very careful, find out their credentials, find out what, what type of work they're doing. Um, one of the alarming facts, which I think I need to share with you all, is that an agent should take commission. So if an agent gets you a job, then you, and then say for instance the job gives you 10,000 rand, that agent then has to specify the type of commission that they will take. Now this needs to be negotiated in a contract before you are sent to any, any, any castings. Um, I've heard of agents asking for money up front, 
I personally don't believe in that because what are, what are you paying for? Um, you should never, in that I know about, pay for going to an audition. Going to an audition is on your own speed and if you get the audition and if you are cast, then the agent will then negotiate your contract on your behalf. But as a performer, you have every right to scrutinize the contract, to read through it, and if there's anything in there that you do not understand, you have every right to, 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 to ask questions and deny. Moving to my next fact, um, and that is the nudity in the sex clause, especially for the ladies, and, and it's for the men as well. I mean, let's, 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 let's be gender, um, gender, gender neutral in this. But, you know, going back to, to acting a couple of years ago, and I, I was horrified at, at, at how women had been represented in, on, on set and in the industry, and the fact that, that my employers at the time were trying to force me to take off my clothing and trying to force me to emulate sex scenes, which... In my contract, and it was, contra and it was clause number 20.1 and 20.2, stating that I was not going to go semi-nude or nude, and yes, they were trying to push me into a corner, to the extent that I had to get the, the channel involved and so forth, and then they apologized, we moved on. And when I did that, and I spoke to other, and, and, and I put it out there publicly, I got a lot of other comments from young actresses who had been through the exact same situation with me. And although I didn't mention the producer's name, they mentioned that person's name. So the reason why I'm telling you this story is that if it is happening, you need to make people aware of it. If you do not want to take off your clothes on set, you do not have to. Remember, 20 years down the line, you want to be able to look back at your career and say, I did this in my marriage, not because I have beautiful breasts or I've got a gorgeous torso. It's about your craft. And moving on to that in terms of what knowing your rights are, is that we have an organization called the South African Guild of Actors. That's saga.co.za. I would advise you to please, please join. It's about 130 rand a month. Not only does it protect you as a performer in South Africa, in situations like this, like what happened with me, I was able to bring a lawyer into the mediation and we were able to, 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 to arbitrate and, and to, to mediate the, the, the situation before going to a court of law. Um, but it also opens you up to, to other workshops and other industries and so forth. So there's a lot of different workshops that happen which are done by uh, South African Guild of Actors practitioners and so forth. So in closing, the most important things that, that you need to know when getting into the industry is know what you want to do, believe in what you want to do, and you've got to be passionate about what you want to do. Then you've got to see yourself as a business. You're a brand. Um, when you later on in life, you can get to the point where you can copyright and trademark your name like I have. Um, and that just protects you so that other advertisers can't just use your face or image or name wherever they're pleased to. What the fact of being a business? You've got to have a recent resume, up to date, no lying on your resume because people do follow up on that. And the fact that if you are caught out about lying on your resume, the industry is pretty small, we all talk. We need recent photos of yourself. Clear cut recent photos, not too much makeup, um, no, no wearing sunglasses, not wearing a hat. You need to see what you look like. Head, head shoulder photographs and then full length photographs as well. See yourself as a business. Moving into the social media space, the best, best possible way to advertise your brand. But it's also the easiest way to tarnish your brand. So be careful what pictures you're liking. Be careful how you're commenting. If you are a very political person, make sure you're clued up on those politics. If you are a very inspirational person and this is how you're going to attach your brand and, and, and mold your brand, it's a perfect platform to share motivational or, or inspirational quotes and so forth. So be very, very careful of how you conduct yourself on social media and then of course how you conduct yourself out in the streets. Yes, go out, have fun, whatever. But Getting a little bit too crazy and having a little bit too many tequilas and dancing on the dance floor, remember somebody's going to be having a, a camera um, and possibly it will land up on social media. And, you know, if your brand is very small, people won't notice, but the minute your brand starts to grow, people want to find that negative, find those things about you that they can try and bring you down. So be aware of that. And that then moves me into my next bit space is that you need the naysayers out there. Uh, when I was entering the industry, it wasn't as harsh now because we didn't have social media and so forth. But to develop and to grow and to nurture within this industry, you need a thick skin. 
people will always try and bring you down. And how I learned to deal with that was that, okay, you think that of me, cool. I don't have to prove myself to you, but I'm aware of what, what people are saying about me out there. So be aware of that, um, but don't let that define you. And that's why it's very, very important when you're developing your brand, who are you? For instance, Rosie within a brand, it's, it's, it's merged over the years, but at the moment, I'm a Pan-African media proprietor. What is that? Somebody who is, who is excelled within the media industry. Pan-African because I travel across the continent. I have a, a talent agency where I represent talent from across the continent. So therefore, I've, 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 I've put all of those together. My three passions in life are woman, Africa, and arts. All the things that I do, all the type of work that I do revolves around those things. That is what my brand represents. Um, at times, you will get opportunities, and if, and if it doesn't feel right, and you're feeling this role is going to, to jeopardize you, you're not going to enjoy it, don't do it. One thing is, as humans is that we have this powerful thing called intuition. Listen to that gut feeling. If something is not right, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's not right. So don't do it. Um, and, and, and in closing, being a talented person is a gift. God didn't grow, but grant that talent to everybody. So respect that gift, nurture that gift, and, and make sure you have fun. Because if you do it right, you can stay around for a very, very long time, and you can keep on having fun. Um, and, and you can keep on um, empowering and putting that and, and, and passing that knowledge on. Remember, whatever platform you step onto, you've got to make sure that you've created enough stairway and in that comfortable space for the people that are coming behind you. Don't be selfish. Um, and enjoy yourself. If there's anything else that, that you would like to find out, I'm on all the social media strands, um, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Um, if you don't have those accounts, as a performer, best you start it. Monitor your pages. Um, follow inspirational people. Follow people that you would like to have conversations with. When you get to a point where you really reach out to somebody to see if they'd be willing to mentor you. Um, and the most important thing is, as I said before, is that you've got to have fun, but you've got to know what your brand is and who you are. Until then, we'll see you next time.